A controversial altar to Satan installed in the Iowa State Capitol has received an unexpected alteration. As the Republic Sentinel reported, Michael Cassidy, a Christian former military officer, officer, tore down and beheaded the Satan altar, claiming, quote, the world may tell Christians to submissively accept the legitimization of Satan, but none of the founders would have considered government sanction of satanic altars inside Capitol buildings as protected by the First Amendment. Cassidy added, my conscience is held captive to the word of God, not to bureaucratic decree, and so I acted. Cassidy's decision to destroy the statue was met with mixed response online. Some argued that this was hypocrisy by the right. One commentator on X noted, the Church of Satan's monument at the Iowa Capitol is a political statement. Vandalizing it is not only a crime, it reminds us one religious liberty is a one-sided principle for Christian conservatives and two, courage and stupidity are often indistinguishable. Others noted that the left was more than happy to dare to tear down statues of the founding fathers and that turnabout is fair play. As one pastor on X put it, if you celebrated or even shrugged when statues of Washington, Jefferson, or Lee were torn down, but you sigh or shake your head when a statue of Satan is torn down, then you've been deeply catechized by the world. So, Jessica, I think this guy is a hero. Uh, no surprise there. Um, first of all, the idea that the Satanic Temple is a protected religion under the First Amendment is obviously hogwash. The whole idea of Satanism is anti-religion. That display was put up to mock Christianity. Everything regarding the Satanic Temple indicates that they're not a religion and really don't even consider themselves as such. They basically just do these things to try to troll Christians. So for example, the Satanic Temple says that they don't even believe that Satan is a real uh, figure. They view him as a literary character who represents things like rebellion and liberty. Um, so I just don't understand the argument, I guess, from some people who watch this saying that they uh, deserve uh, equal religious protection under the First Amendment. I find it fascinating, the whole thing, the comparisons to the, uh, the statues from monuments of the Civil War of folks who were fighting against the Union Army people who are very pro-slavery in their time here on earth. I think, honestly, my take is that any political or very religious statue gives me a weird vibe. This, fine, you wanna take it down? It was ugly. It's not even really about what it stands for for me. It's that if I walked into an abandoned house, let's say there's a reason I'm in there, <laughs> um, perhaps I'm looking at it to purchase it and renovate it. And I see something like this, uh-uh, I'm out of there. I don't know what's going on, what kind of dark energy is around this. It gives me a bad vibe. But political statues, to a lesser degree, also give me a weird bad vibe. To resurrect someone who is a prominent general or politician and have them in stone always there feels imperial to me in an unsettling way. So if you don't like a statue, tear it down. Go ahead. That's my take I'm not going to de defend any statues that are currently up. If people don't like it and they take it down, fine. Because it seems to me that no matter what way you twist it, the, the true rule of law is whoever has the most power and strength at the time. And as much as we want to pretend that there's legitimacy in the state, the state has power because the state can exert violence against the population. Many people would protest in the United States that stay home because they are afraid of our police force. No matter which way you cut it, strong man rule wins. And if a man's strong enough to tear down the statue, I guess there's no more statue, especially well, if it's ugly. I appreciate that you're at least logically consistent on the issue. And you're right. Our state capitals should not be erecting things that are not beautiful. I mean, part of the reason that we make government buildings beautiful, the reason why we try to beautify our country is to have pride in what we've built for the American citizens, the American populace, to feel like they're living in a place that they can be proud of. I think aesthetic beauty is incredibly important in any society and leads even to higher thinking. Um, but I would also add, just in response to some of the other criticisms of this guy and also what even some supposed conservatives have said about this satanic statue, is they try to defend it 
again, under the First Amendment, based on the Free Exercise Clause, um, which is a complete misunderstanding of what the Founding Fathers intended um, with that. I can get into that in a second. But also under the idea of free speech. State capitals have never been required to give open air to the profane, to the obscene, um, to, to plenty of things that they find objectionable. I mean, Nikki Haley was not accused of violating the First Amendment when she took the Confederate flag down from the South Carolina state capitol. And certainly, I don't think anyone would object to the idea that a uh, state legislature would be required to put up Nazi paraphernalia under the guise of free speech. And then going back to this idea of freedom of religion applying to Satanism. When the Founding Fathers um, came up with this idea for the First Amendment of the Free Exercise Clause, the idea was that religion at the time was defined as something specifically oriented towards God. Now, over time, that, of course, expanded to include other religions like Judaism and Islam. But it was also done with the recognition that freedom of religion would not be expanded or shouldn't be stretched to include an ability for people to use religion as an excuse to justify all kinds of insane practices. Like there's a reason why religious freedom in the United States does not imply, apply to um, indigenous religions that required human sacrifice, right? There's always been limits on that. And Satanism being explicitly anti-religion and anti-God makes it a, an obvious exception to the rule. I think having any kind of religious installation at the Capitol is a weird practice, to, to put it simply. The reason that this was ever a display at the Capitol is because they had holiday displays that were for various religions. Whatever people were celebrating, they could, you know, fill out a form, work with the State Department or the Iowa State Capitol and say, you know, we want to have our time put up our little our little thing for our holiday. And I guess the Satanists caught wind of this possibility and decided that they would like to participate. I don't know what holiday they were celebrating. I don't know much about Satanism, although I teased Amber that I hail Satan before we did this segment. But I told her I was just kidding, which is true. I am just kidding. But I think uh, it's a funny image. The Iowa Capitol has been the place where many bad policies, in my opinion, have been passed recently, including pulling back protections for, for child workers, making child labor legal. So to me, with the recent policies coming out of the Iowa State Capitol, I thought it was funny imagery to have Satan there, as if they have some kind of deep, dark motivations for their policies. Was it a funny statement, or are they seriously religious Satanists is my question. And did they have a holiday that they were really celebrating? Is it a big prank is a big question I have. Yeah, the Satanic Temple historically was created specifically to challenge legally the idea of free exercise of religion and what they call hypocrisy among Christian conservatives. So they will often do stunts like this to try to make a point. Um, recently, they have been trying to put after school Satan clubs in elementary schools because there are also what's called good news clubs, which are basically conservative Christian clubs that kids go to and read the Bible. So all of this is intentionally done for a political and legal reason, which is why why I say that they obviously don't deserve protection under freedom of religion. They don't actually believe in Satan. They think that he is just a symbol. Um, so I think that the Iowa state legislature, perhaps the attorney general actually, should say, OK, if you think that you have a legal right to this, then let's go to court. Let's fight this up to the Supreme Court, which now has a conservative majority, thanks to former President Donald Trump. And let's see who wins. Let's settle this fight once and for all. For the past two decades, the Satanic Temple has been explicitly trolling Christians and trying to mock us by using government resources. I would posit that they don't have the right to do that. So let's take it to court. Let's have that fight. And I'm very troubled by so many weak need so-called conservatives and Republicans who sit here and take this libertarian approach to everything related to morality in our society, where they think that state capital buildings and government in general has to be value neutral to the extreme. Every 
piece of legislation that we pass comes from a moral framework. And it's not any less legitimate for that moral framework to be based on uh, religious ideology than any other type of moral framework or wherever your morality might come from. So the idea that they are punting on this and acting like there's nothing they can do and throwing their hands up in the air is annoying. And exactly why I think Trump rose to power in 2015 and was elected was because conservatives, the conservative base, wanted someone who was willing to actually fight these battles. So I hope someone steps up and do it. This guy, Michael, who uh, beheaded it, I think was on the right track. We'll be back with more Rising after this.